the WrestleMania Minutes on Down the Hour Wrestling Podcast. With Robbie Mack and Kevin Laramay, here's Kevin Laramay. WrestleMania 15 from the Union Center in Philly, Pennsylvania, Rob. Kevin, one of my greatest memories of high school and just this period of wrestling takes me to WrestleMania 15. And there's a bunch of reasons why. Well, go ahead. Why? Uh, okay, well, first of all, the the this was a period of the time when we when wrestling was huge in high school. Everyone loved it. I admitted to Ken Shamrock that we had our own version of the corporation in high school. <laughs> this was around uh, that time where, you know, people, you would open up people's lockers and they would have pictures of Austin and, and, and whatnot. But you open up my locker, you have pictures of Vince McMahon and, and the corporation. And just, it just takes me back to that period of time. It just takes me back to high school, just to a time where times were a lot easier and a lot more relaxed, I guess you could say. And not only that, but the day after of this WrestleMania 15 was the very first Nitro ever in Toronto in which I attended. So I also have that memory because I remember being excited to watch the event and also being excited that we're going to Nitro the next night where about 12 of us took a stress limo down to Toronto, had a great time. So not only does this WrestleMania resonate with me on a positive basis because I enjoyed the, the card itself, but it also resonates on a nostalgia standpoint because it takes me back to a really fun time in my life. Well, very nice indeed. For me, over the years, uh, WrestleMania 15, like I was saying in the end of the last pod, last podcast, the WrestleMania Minutes, it, it wasn't really memorable to me. But over the years, there's a couple of moments I remember. The, the Bra for All match between mm-hmm. Butterbean and Bart Gunn, just because <laughs> uh, of... The fact that it's so infamous over the years on the bra for all, how it was a fucking stupid idea to have it to begin with, and the fact that it destroyed everybody's rep- reputation. It didn't promote, didn't put anybody over. And at the end of the day, the only guy that got a little bit over by that got knocked out in Butterbean by 35 freaking seconds. And I'm being generous with 35 seconds, I have to say. And got knocked the fuck out. Yeah, I think 35 seconds might be overshooting a little bit. Yeah, that, that that match is infamous in WrestleMania history. There was no work shoot. They really they really weren't banking on Bart Gunn being the winner, uh, so they didn't really know what to do with it. And when he knocked Steve Williams, Doctor Dusty Williams, in the preliminary round of the Brawl for All, and how Steve Williams folded in half, bro- pulled and teared his hamstring, got the mis- massive and severe concussion, he got knocked the fuck out. Bart Gunn did a great like. Those matches, those matches, those fights that he had in the Brawl for All were awesome. But the one against Butterbean, uh, Butterbean just destroyed the guy and just ended any idea of having another Brawl for All tournament. Yeah, the Brawl for All tournament was a horrible idea. And Bart Gunn's push and, you know, the fact that Bart Gunn knocked everyone out in the Brawl for All kind of made him over for a little bit. And then that all got squashed within 35 seconds at WrestleMania 15. <laughs> Well, apparently the idea of that was to get somebody over as Dr. Darcy William and then you promote him as legit, like, tough guy and you can have him going for the title and have some legitimacy to your title and all that. But that's not what they did with it. Well, because it was a shoot and not a work, well, what ha- what's about to happen happened. The guy that you wanted to win didn't win and got knocked the fuck out. And yeah, exactly. Let's go into details of this show. March 28th, 1999, from the First Union Center in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. 20,276,000 people sold out First Union Center and smacked right down smacked in the middle of the Attitude Era with The Rock, Stone Cold, Triple H, Mankind, Undertaker, Paul White on the poster. Yeah, this is the first. The Paul White had just recently joined the company a couple of months ago. There was a big clusterfuck about what was going to happen in the main event, Paul White. I mean, you have Paul White that you just gotten from the WCW, but you didn't have him on the card in a match. You know what I mean? He was, uh, well, I think he was arrested at some point. And then there was a whole, there was a whole shit shang. There, there was just a bunch of stuff going on that. Why wasn't Paul White in a match? You know what I mean? You just, you paid a lot of money for him to get WCW is one of, I don't want to say their biggest draws, but one of the most recognizable names, a guy who was actually WCW homegrown talent, a recognizable figure at least. 
well, the son of Andre the Giant, of course, you know. Sure. Um, actually, he was. I'm so sorry. I'm a retard. He was on the card. He did lose. He lost to Mankind okay. in, in in a disqualification match. But they they could have done a lot more with 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 all of that. You know what I mean? Because that was the uh, to see who was going to be the special guest referee in the main event. But the funny thing is, I don't think either of them ended up being the special referee because Paul Way got arrested. Mick Foley was injured kayfabe but i think mick foley still came out at the end and counted the uh count of three if i can remember correctly but yeah i see what you're kevin i see what you mean about not being memorable for 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 you um because at the end of the day it wasn't that fantastic of an uh, of an event no shane mcmahon defeated xbox shane mcmahon as the european champion which is stupid stone cold defeated the rock so he got that first time yes. in the mains the first, the first of three meetings between Rock and Austin, and it was a good match. You know, these guys always worked well together. They were like Brett and Michaels. They can't not have a good match with one another. Taker went six and zero, oh, if I'm not mistaken, over Big Boss Man. Six, six, seven, six yeah, Taker seven. seven. I can't remember because he missed. He, he missed, missed a couple, yeah. So yeah, he missed WrestleMania ten. So he he won at seven. He won at eight. He won at nine. He missed ten. He he won at eleven. He won at twelve. He won at thirteen. Be, yeah, this would be seven and zero. So seven and zero over Big yeah. Boss Man, which is nothing particular with uh, with Taylor. So, yeah, nothing. Like I said, nothing stands out to me. Owen Hart was with Jeff Jarrett in a tag match. So nothing really that much impressive for that pay per view. All the big names that we saw in the pay per view prior are all like in shitty situation, in my opinion, in that main event. Well, Kevin, this this. This pay per view was the culmination, so to speak, of the Rock and uh, Mc, sorry, the Austin McMahon feud. Although it would continue after this, because Austin didn't have the Austin, I think, dropped the title to Undertaker at SummerSlam this year, if I remember correctly. And yeah, this was supposed to be the culmination of that feud. But once they they kind of got stuck in an NWO situation, where like, well, this is so hot and so good, we have to continue with this at some point. So then that's when things got a little skewed. They they involved the. That's the, where I dropped off to. That's where I was. Oh, that's really? Where I became lapsed. So. Really? Yes. Wow. Well, uh, yeah, and that's when they kind of got into the whole Ministry of Darkness thing as well. So it is what it was. Oh but. yeah, I remember that part. Anyways. So now being to remember, that will wraps it up for WrestleMania 15 and looking ahead, WrestleMania 16. Or 2000. 